Welcome back. Ayotunde Balogun has sports news on the News to 10. Yes, indeed, Gimba, Russia 2018 bound Super Eagles of Nigeria will meet with President Mohamedou Buhari at the presidential villa on Wednesday morning. Minister of Youth and Sports Development, Suleiman Dalong, will present the three time African champions to the president before the commencement of the weekly Federal Executive Council meeting. Meanwhile, technical advisor of the team, Gennett Rowe, will cut down his 30 man list to 25 just before the game against England at Wembley Stadium in London. UEFA has confirmed it is taking no action against Real Madrid skipper Sergio Ramos for a clash with Liverpool goalkeeper Loris Carrius in Saturday's Champions League final. UEFA says the disciplinary rule which allows cases to be opened for serious misconduct not seen by the match officials is not applied in these cases. Ramos struck Carrius' head with his right elbow in an off-the-ball incident when the score was still 0-0 early in the second half of Madrid's 3-1 win on Saturday in Kiev. A former world number one, Serena Williams made a successful return to Grand Slam tennis with a 7-6-6-4 win over Kristina Pliskova at the French Open. It was a tight contest between the two big servers. In the first set, Serena bounced back from three love down in the tiebreak to win. And the second set was close, like the first, but the American overpowered her opponent eventually. And the 36-year-old will play Australia's Ashley Barty in the next round. American boxer Dante Wilder has finally shed light on two possible dates and locations in which the blockbuster fight against Anthony Joshua will take place. Wilder claimed that he's willing to fight the WBA, IBF, IBO and WBO champion in his home country or in America. The 32-year-old said the fight will be in September if it's in the UK and in November if it happens in America. The Russian Olympic Committee has named fencing champion Stanislav Pozhnyakov as its president. Pozhnyakov won the, or who won, the three Olympic gold medals in 1996 and in the year 2000, previously managed the Olympic athletes from Russia delegation at February's Winter Olympics in Pyeongchang after Russia's team was formally banned for doping. He defeated the only other candidate, former swimmer and International Olympic Committee member Alexander Popov by 214 votes. 256. And the Golden State Warriors are back in the NBA Finals for the fourth time in a row after beating the Houston Rockets in Game 7 of the Western Conference Finals. Led by Kevin Durant's 34 points, Golden State prevailed 101 to 92 points at the Toyota Center after trailing by as many as 15 in the first half. Point guard Stephen Curry also contributed 27 points and 10 assists as Golden State booked yet another date with rivals Cleveland Cavaliers in the finals, where James Harden scored 32 points for Houston in the losing effort. And that's sports news. The news at 10 continues shortly. The Ethiopian government has freed British citizen Andagachu, and if a short, Sege, who has been held on death row. Back in 2009, the government had accused Andy of plotting a coup and he was sentenced to death in absentia in 2009. The father of three fled Ethiopia in the 1970s and sought political asylum in the UK. But four years ago, he was apprehended at an airport in Yemen while in transit and turned over to the Ethiopian authorities. He denied the charges though and was pardoned on May 19th along with 575 other inmates as part of the Ethiopian government's current efforts to promote reconciliation. His partner, Yemi Heli Meriam, who has led a campaign for his release, said that she was thankful that he is now free. His release coincides with a pledge by Ethiopia's new prime minister to carry out reforms following anti-government protests that broke out in 2015. Two female police officers and a civilian have been shot dead by a gunman in Belgium. The man's motive is not clear, but the incident is being treated as terrorism. Prosecutors said that the man followed and attacked the officers with a knife before taking a gun from them and opening fire. He also shot dead a 22-year-old man who was sitting in the passenger seat of a parked car as he walked in the direction of a nearby school where he briefly took 
a member of staff hostage. Videos posted on social media showed people run into safety as they heard several gunshots. Children at a nearby school were also moved to safety. Belgium's interior minister, Jan Jambon, says that investigators are trying to establish exactly what happened and that his thoughts are with the victims of the horrific act. The country remains on alert following series of jihadist attacks in the country and in neighboring France. And the main news again. President Mohamed Buhari today addressed Nigerians on Democracy Day, where he listed the achievements of his administration in the past three years. He also vowed to end the activities of armed bandits terrorizing parts of the country. Also today, speakers at the Channel's Forum on Democracy Day x-rayed Nigeria's developmental challenges and charted a path for the country's journey out of its current predicament. And three people, including two police officers, were today shot dead in eastern Belgium by a gunman suspected to be a terrorist. And that's how it's been on the news at 10 tonight. I want to thank you so much indeed for watching. On behalf of all of us here, have a splendid night rest and enjoy the rest of the Democracy Day. Good night.